With Home Assistant, you have lots of choices for text-to-speech integrations. So in this video, we're going to compare the four big ones. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. I got into home automation because I wanted my own version of Jarvis. It's part of the reason my smart home is built on Home Assistant. After all, I needed a platform that could bring together a group of disparate smart home devices to see if they could become something more, to see if they could work together when I needed them to, to make my home smarter than ever before. But even if you aren't looking to turn your home into a sarcastic AI-powered assistant, there may become a time when you want your home to notify you of things verbally, which is why you might want a text-to-speech integration. But which one do you choose? In this area, there are four integrations that I consider to be the main contenders. They are Google Translate, what I'm going to refer to as the Amazon Media Player, so I don't offend or trigger any passive-aggressive voice assistants that might be listening, Nabucasa, and Amazon Polly. So this week, we're going to take a closer look at these four. We're going to walk through how to set up each of these integrations in Home Assistant, and we're going to cover basic use. Then we're going to do an audible taste test, if you will. So let's get to it. First up is Google Translate. The Google Translate integration comes with Home Assistant, which means all you have to do is enable it. It works with most media players, and as of this video, it's free to use. You are limited to the default Google Voice, but it does allow you to choose your language. This integration does use an unofficial API though, I believe, which does carry some risk of breaking changes in the future. And you can't use it with Echoes, so if you're all in on the Amazon platform, then this integration is probably not the one for you. And what's going to become a reoccurring theme with these integrations? This integration requires Home Assistant to have access to the internet. So let's talk setup. To add Google Translate to your Home Assistant, just open your configuration.yaml in your favorite editor. If you don't have a favorite editor, I suggest the File Editor add-on. It's easy to install and you can edit your configuration right in the browser. We're going to be making changes to the TTS section. If you don't already have a TTS section, you can just add it. Under the TTS heading, add platform and then Google Translate. Then save your changes and restart Home Assistant. Once you have restarted, you can start using this service. Here's a script I worked up that calls the Google Translate service passes it the entity ID of a media player that we want to use, and then the text message we want to convert to speech. If we execute this script, this is what it sounds like. Hello, I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. Next, we have the Amazon Media Player. If you're all in on Echoes, then this is the integration for you. This integration is part of Hacks or the Home Assistant Community Store, which means it doesn't come out of the box with Home Assistant. If you don't already have the Hacks custom component installed in your Home Assistant, then you'll need to get that set up first before you can continue, which adds a little bit of setup time. Check out my recent Lab Notes video on installing Hacks if you want to go this route. Like the Google Translate option, this one is free as well. And like the Google Translate option, you're stuck with the default voice for your account. And of course, this option or integration also requires your Home Assistant instance to have access to the internet. Setup of this one is a little bit more involved, like I said, if you don't already have Hacks installed. But if you do have Hacks installed, then you can just head over to Hacks and Integrations to get started. In Hacks Integrations, come to the bottom and click Explore and Add Repositories. In the window that pops up, search for the Amazon Media Player, but using her actual name. Click on the Madam A Media Player and then click Install This Repository. After you install this repository, you're going to have to restart Home Assistant. But once that's back up, you can head over to Configurations and then Integrations. Click the Add button and search for the A word. Once you find the media player, click on it. When it finishes installing, you'll need to enter your Amazon login details. Make sure the region is correct and click Finish. You'll be prompted to log in via the website to authorize this app to have access to your Amazon account. 
But once you've got that done, you can jump back into Home Assistant and you should see all of your echoes. Here's a script I built to test this integration out. This integration creates a notify service for each of your echoes. So just call the service for the echo you want to use. Then we just have to pass it our message and we need to specify that it's TTS. Then if we execute this script, this is what it sounds like. Hello, I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. Next, we have the Nabucasa text-to-speech integration. This is where we start to get into the paid options. This integration comes with a Nabucasa subscription. So with your $5 a month subscription supporting Home Assistant, you also get a text-to-speech integration. Out of subscribing to Nabucasa and connecting your instance to Nabucasa, there is no other setup required to use this integration. It works with any media player that works with the Google Translate integration, which means you can't use Echoes with this either. But you can choose which voice you want to use and the language. And by now, you should already know that since this is using a cloud service, this integration requires that your Home Assistant instance has access to the internet. So let's walk through setup. Once you have an active subscription and you're on a current version, setup is done. You have access to the Cloud Say service. Here's a test script I built to demo the Nabucasa text to speech integration. You call the Cloud Say service, pass it the media player you want to play the speech on, and pass it the text you want converted to speech. For this service, I include the cache is true. Under options, I specified that the gender was female so that we can compare it to the default voice from the other services. And I set the language to US. And if we execute this script, it will sound like this. Hello, I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. And the last of the four is Amazon Polly. This is the text-to-speech integration I use in my setup. And it does come as part of Home Assistant Core, but to use it, you need an AWS account and access keys. Of the four on this list, the setup for this one might be the most complicated. It is at least the most time consuming. Like the Nabucasa option, this one costs as well, although your first 12 months are free. After that, it's $4 a month for 1 million characters spoken if you're using the standard voice. I'm currently paying around 26 cents a month, which is not a huge investment. You definitely have more flexibility with this integration. There are lots of languages and voices to choose from, and you can use both the standard or pay a little bit more money for the neural voices. Like the other options, you can't use Amazon Polly with your Amazon Echoes, which is a bit weird, but I suspect it's because Jeff Bezos doesn't have enough yachts. Anyway, you can probably guess what the last thing on this list is. It needs access to the internet. So let's run through the setup. To set up Amazon Polly, we're going to need an AWS account. So head over to aws.amazon.com and click Create Account. Give them an email and a password. Then select Personal on the next screen and give Bezos your contact info. Next, they're going to want a credit card for the Yacht Fund. With AWS, they bill you only for the services you use and for Polly, the first 12 months are free. Next, they will want to confirm your identity using a number sent to your phone. Okay, we're almost done. We're just going to select the basic support plan. And then account setup is done. Now let's sign in. Okay, here we are at the AWS console. There is a lot of stuff here, but don't worry, we're going to ignore 99% of it. First thing you need to do is set up a user. Under Services, go to IAM or Identity Access Management. Here, you want to add a user, so click Users, then Add User, and give it a username. Select Programmatic Access, and click Next. Then, we need to give the user some permissions. Click Attach Existing Policies directly, and search for Poly. Here, you want Amazon Poly Full Access, so check the box next to it and then click Next. Here is a chance to add tags if you want to. Tags are meant to help you identify your AWS services when you have a lot of them. Since all we're doing here is Polly, I ignore this and click Next. 
Then you get a chance to review what you've done. Looks good, so click Complete Setup. And if all went well, you should now have a user with an access key ID and an access key. You will need both of these, so download the CSV or copy them from this screen. You will not see the access key again, so grab it now. Now we can finish the setup in Home Assistant. Grab your favorite file editor and open your configuration.yaml. Under TTS, you want to add platform Amazon Poly, and then your access key ID and access key. If you're planning on sharing your config on GitHub or somewhere else, you should put these in the secrets.yaml and then just refer to them here. But since this is just a demo box and these credentials have already been destroyed, I just pasted them here. Once you have that saved in your configuration, it's time to restart. Once that comes back up, you'll be able to leverage the Amazon Poly Say service. Here's a test script I built as a demo. I simply call the Amazon Poly service, tell it what speaker to play the message on, then it needs some text. And if we execute this script, it will sound like this. Hello, I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. Okay, four great options for handling text-to-speech in Home Assistant. But it's taken us a while to get here, so let's hear those four again, but this time side by side, so you can get a better idea of the differences between them. Hello, I am Home Assistant's Virtual Assistant. 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 Like I said, I use Amazon Polly in my setup. And one of the reasons I use Amazon Polly is because I have a little more control over the configuration and how the integration processes the text-to-speech. For example, I can use SAML and add realistic breathing effects to the text. So instead of this, Hello, I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. I get this. I am Home Assistant's virtual assistant. Just a subtle difference, and it's a bit freaky the first time you hear it, but after a while, you do get used to it. And, for reference, this is what my house sounds like. Do you like your clothes smelling like mildew? Because that is what is happening right now. You should rotate the laundry. But you'll hear more of my house in an upcoming video where I do a smart home tour of my audible notifications that happen throughout the day. Okay, you probably noticed that there were no local options in my four main contenders. And I originally hadn't planned on considering local options because I've tested them in the past and they just didn't sound as good as these four. But I do understand that some people may want to have a local option. After all, Home Assistant is a local first platform. So if you're looking for a local option for text to speech, there's at least two that I know of, Mary TTS and Pico TTS. I haven't really played with either one of these except for doing basic audio tests to see how they sounded. And frankly, I thought they sounded a little more robotic than the cloud options. But both of them do come included with Home Assistant, which means all you have to do is enable them and the text-to-speech processing happens on your local device, which means you probably wanna beef your machine if you wanna leverage this a lot in your setup. But they do work, so if you're looking for a local only option, you might check them out. And we've spent enough time on this video. Hit that like button if you found this video useful and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.